State University Library today is Friday, April 22nd, 2016, and I am in Arapahoe, Oklahoma, in Custer County, to speak with Clint and Pam Rausch. Clint and Pam are here for our Cowboys in Every County Oral History Project. Thank you so much for joining me today. Good to be here. Well, I'd like to learn a little bit more about you two. Could we start with uh, where you were born and the year you were born? Clint? Uh, I was born in 1947 at uh, the Clinton Hospital here in Custer County. And I grew up uh, west of Arapahoe, Oklahoma with my parents, Harold and Essie Roush. Uh, I have two sisters, uh, and my parents uh, farmed in Custer County, as well as my grandparents and my great-grandparents, so I'm a fourth-generation farmer here in Custer County. Okay. And Pam, the year you were born and uh, where you were born? Well, I was born in 1947 also. and. Coincidentally, Clinton, Oklahoma, but Weatherford's my hometown. I guess the hospital must have been a preference in Clinton over Weatherford back then, but uh, my parents were also farmers, uh, and um, they, my dad uh, was pure Swiss, and his great-grandfather, uh, Emil Nebel, bought, uh, bought a farm at Weatherford from, from Bill Weatherford, and uh, my dad grew up farming that, got it from his great-grandfather. No, from his grandfather, my great grandfather. But anyway, uh, they. Uh, I grew up on a farm just like Clint, uh, not too far away from him, about probably 20 minutes. Okay. Well, both of you growing up on the farm probably have fond memories of chores. Why don't you share with me some of your chores? Clint, what do you remember growing up doing? Well, I mean, uh, you know, growing up in the late 40s, early 50s, most farmers had milk cows, they had some pigs, and they had cattle. And most farms, since they were so labor intensive, uh, just but were very small, like maybe 160 acres to start with. And I remember uh, my parents working very hard, milking cows, carrying feed to the hogs and the cattle. I guess my first I was probably seven years old when I learned to drive the tractor with my dad while he was feeding cattle. I'd be driving the tractor and he would be back in the wagon scooping out the feed to the cattle. And I can remember learning to drive. I ran into the feed bunk several times. Uh, and I remember milking cows and feeding hogs and uh, just chores on the farm. Everybody worked hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Pam, what do you remember from your youth? I'm glad he has to go first because it helps me kind of compare the two stories, but I got to have a half Shetland and I got to go after this black milk cow. Thank goodness uh, my, I didn't have to learn to milk it. My grandmother warned me, don't ever learn to milk a cow, but my dad milked the cow. And uh, then I, the next chore, my, I had one sister, and our, our job was also to gather the eggs. And that was the scariest job because the, we had hens that wouldn't let us have the eggs, so we had to put on leather gloves and actually kind of use a board to make the chicken lay down so we could get the eggs under from underneath her. But th those were the two jobs that, that I remember on the farm mainly. Mm -hmm. And I did chop a little cotton and peanuts, but I didn't get to drive a tractor till I was a sophomore. I was legal, a legal age when I learned how. <laughs> so. Well. It sounds like both of your families uh, worked very hard with y'all growing up. Um, was education important in your families, Clint? Uh, yes. Uh, my father graduated from high school here at Arapahoe, uh, just like I did several years later. My mother uh, just has an eighth grade education, but she was very smart. I mean, she she uh, had a uh, she, she liked to read and spent a lot of time reading the Bible and uh, she, I, she I, I would think she was just as educated as my father but in her own way but uh, uh, in fact I think she won the spelling bee in the eighth grade at the Wombles, Wombles School which is out here between the Rappo and the Butler but education was stressed and they wanted I would be the first of my family to attend college and they they definitely wanted me to go on to college. They didn't realize how long I would stay in college when they told me to go, but 
uh, yes, education was very important in our family. Mm -hmm. What about you, Pam? Well, my mom uh, was a school teacher, but her story's kind of weird because uh, she was at Southwestern getting her degree, but World War II broke out. And so they came and asked her if she would uh, stop her college after two years and be a teacher. And then my dad uh, was in World War II, was wounded, but, but survived fine. And then he came home and um, he and mom got married after the war. And so mother didn't get her piece of paper until I was a sophomore in high school. I remember going back to college and studying while she was stirring the mm. food up for us. And, and then she taught for maybe 15, 20 years, you know, didn't teach all that much longer, didn't teach to retire, kind of an early retirement. But anyway, uh, Education, we were very blessed that, now dad wasn't started college, but then was drafted. And my grandmother, the best story is that my mother's mother was a school teacher back in the day where they had a one room school. She had to make the fire. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, she didn't have to fix the lunches, but she was the janitor and, and with all ages in one room in a kind of a very primitive classroom. I saw some of them and, and I got to watch her when I was a kid teach some around the Watonga area. Mm -hmm. So they were Western Oklahoma too. But hmm. Different, but very blessed. To, both of us, and of course, I was expected to go to college. I never thought I would get out of it. And I'm glad I got to go to OSU. Well, you know, speaking of education, can you kind of talk to me about the schools you attended when you were younger in this area? Clint? Yeah. Uh, starting in first grade, I attended Arapahoe High School, which is just two and a half miles south of here where we live now and finished all 12 uh, grades at the Rappo School. Uh, well, could you describe the, the building for me? Well, it, I mean, it was a fairly modern building at that time. Of course, right now, this year, if you go down to the Rappo School, there are only two structures left. They've rebuilt everything since then. The only structure left is one of the water tires and the old old bus barns. They had, a, uh, I know that they had the brick school building and then they had the cafeteria or the lunch room, a separate building. And uh, on the end of the lunch room was, was a, actually a butchering facility where during, F, uh, during our vocational agriculture, we would be butchering hogs. And then as soon as that class was over, we'd go to the lunch room and eat lunch. But there was a separate, I mean, it was a nice school building but it's not, no longer there now. Uh, my favorite class in school was vocational agriculture. Mm -hmm. And a, a man in, in, uh, in the school that taught vocational agriculture is Tuffy Howe. And he was most influ influential in my life, especially on attending Oklahoma State University because every year during our high school, he would take the FFA class to the state convention, which was at Oklahoma, held at Oklahoma State University. So. That's one reason that I wanted to continue my education there is because I've been there every year for four years and my vocational ag teacher had graduated from there uh, just a few years before he started teaching school. But uh, he still is in this area, he lives about three miles from us right now. Hmm. Um, but he had a big influence on my life. What about you, Pam? Where did you go to school when you were growing up? Well, I did the same as Clint, but I started in kindergarten at Weatherford. I don't think they had a kindergarten at a right home oh, but then, but, but, and then graduated from Weatherford uh, after 12 years. And uh, then my, got to, didn't get to go to OSU the first year. My dad just didn't think I was quite ready to go away from home, but I got to finally get to go to OSU after that. And, and the main reason, I had two first cousins that were over there I'd never been like Clint to see the campus. I didn't know how great it was. I just knew they really loved it, and their dad was just like my dad. He was, they were Swiss farmers, and uh, I thought, well, and I, I was definitely looking for a farmer, and he didn't have to be Swiss, but just thought I'd have a better <laughs> chance at OSU than OU. So I guess that's why I went, and I'm glad I did, because I ran into him over there. Clint, you mentioned that you would visit Stillwater with your FFA trips. Uh, so as you're growing up, what, what struck you about OSU when you would visit? Well, I guess, uh, I, the, I mean, one thing is, was the friendliness of the, of the students, even though we were high school students coming on campus, uh, 
you know, they were they were very receptive and welcome as the students. And then, you know, we got to do things right there on on campus at the different uh, buildings. Uh, I guess one thing that uh, the our FFA teacher would he would drive us around and show us the whole campus. He said, "This is where I had this agriculture class. This is where." Uh, so he he made us well aware of all everything that's going on, and it's, it was a lot different then. It was more seemed like more spread out. There was more room between buildings than there are now. Uh, but the beauty of the campus was was great too. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, he took us out to eat uh, while we were there. And he, uh, the place that we ate at, he would take us to this place that had home cooked meals, and they would pass the food around the table. And I think this is the same place that Eskimo Joe's is now. Huh. Uh, but that would have been, you know, back in the 60s, hmm. before Eskimo Joe's. Wow. Well, Clint, you graduated from Arapahoe. Pam, you graduated from Weatherford. So I'm going to kind of talk to you about how you got to campus. So Clint, you're getting ready to go to OSU. How do you get there? Well, uh, there was a guy named Jack Barr that came out during the summer, and he was the recruitment person for Alpha Gamma Rho Fraternity. And uh, he came out to the farm and uh, visited with me and said, would, and, and asked me if I would like to, be, to pledge and live at Alpha Gamma Rho. Well, you know, I'd already made an application for a dormitory, but this really sounded uh, intriguing because there were other people in our county that had were in Alpha Gamma Rho or had graduated just recently and I you know and I knew them and it sounded like a good deal to me so that's that's how I got kind of got there uh, there were actually three of us from my uh, high school out of a class of 16 that went to OSU for the first year uh, one of them stayed one week one stayed one semester and I stayed about eight years <laughs> but couldn't get rid of me. Did you have a car when you drove uh, to Stillwater? Yes, I had a uh, 1965 Impala Chevrolet. So I, it was almost new because I, I, I got it when I was a senior year in high school. So I, I had a car. Uh, I was uh, fortunate to have that. Mm -hmm. Now, Pam, you graduated from high school and you went to college at Southwestern to start. That's correct. So tell me how you got to Southwestern. Well, my mom and dad, um, finally, you know, I was begging to get to go to OSU after a year, and they finally decided, yeah, I could go a sophomore year. My parents took me to campus, and I went right to Stout Hall and was uh, in the dormitory and had a great roommate. We were dear friends. She was in my wedding, and I was in hers. We stayed friends for forever. and. Uh, but, but my experience was uh, I didn't want to pledge anything. I just kind of liked being independent. But I, my, I didn't have to. My cousins were, were Lambda Chi's, and so I got to go to all the parties with some of their friends. And so I really didn't need to go to meetings or be in a sorority at the time. But then finally, my junior year, my, my dear roommate got engaged, and she didn't have time to do things with me, so I did pledge. And luckily, I pledged to KD, and his sister was a pledge in the Kappa Delta house. And she came up to me our junior year, my junior year, and said, uh, my brother would like to go out with you. And I looked at her and I said, you know, she's a pledge, you're not supposed to be that nice to pledges. And I said, well, let me look at him in the annual, we'll look him up. And it was a cute picture. And it was the first date was at, at the student union and President Calm, Clint would be at the head table and I knew the meal was really good. He was president of the farm Ag 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 yeah, okay, and, and so I didn't know him, but when he was sit a young little boy up there with the president of the university, I, I was a nervous wreck for him, and he did fine, but I was still, you know, it was a, but it was a neat first day, and that's how we, we met. Huh, very interesting. She called it the annual, I called it the herd book. Ah, <laughs> I, and you're both referring to the red skin, right? Right, the red yeah, skin. That's right. That's what it was called. <laughs> the herd book. <laughs> I called it an annual. I didn't. Uh, okay, Clint, so you're a freshman in college. You're living in the AGR house. 
How was that going for you? Oh, it was uh, it was pretty rough. I mean, you know that at that time they had a pledge program, but uh, I think there was 20, 20 some of us uh, freshman boys, uh, and you know we had we had to clean the house and take care of the house. But it, I mean, we we bonded together, we worked together, and uh, you know, coming from a small school of sixteen. Uh, I needed some discipline as far as study habits, and, and you know, and they made sure that we knew and and had priorities for the classroom and to get ready for class. Plus, you attended class with with other pledge brothers, and you know that helped you work together to study. And I, I give a lot of credit to being able to make my grades that first year to uh, to the Alpha Gamma Rho fraternity. But it, I mean. Living in that house for four years, we lived there four years, and so you had you live with probably sixty people that you got to know very well, plus new people coming in uh, over years. So you might have met ninety to hundred people over that four year time, and many of those guys are lifelong friends that you might not see them that often, but you can call them up and you can count on them for anything. Mm -hmm. uh, so I really uh, I give a lot of credit to Alpha Gamma Rho for helped me not only to make the grades and study, but also to get me involved in leadership and, and activities there on, on OSU campus. Mm -hmm. Now, Pam, you, you started out in Stout Hall. Yes, that's correct. How was Stout for you? Well, I, I liked living in a dorm. Back in those days, the sad thing was that girls had to put a dress on to go down and eat a meal. And the food was, uh, well, it had to be covered with ketchup. <laughs> I mean, you didn't, it, it was not, it was different. You know, back then, you know, now you look at how the kids eat, it's, it's amazing. But, but that didn't seem very fair to me at the time, and then plus at campus, you know. So my experience, well, with the, with the sorority, well, in the, in the house, I liked the dorm, you know, fine until my roommate, uh, my dear friend, we moved from Stout to Drummond. We got to go to, to move to a new dorm. And, but anyway, when she got engaged, like I said, so... I think I lit, moved right into the KV house. Uh, I don't know, I think they had any pledge that late. You know, I don't remember having to do any meetings or anything. But, but anyway, so I lived in the house the second semester of my junior year, year and then once, then by the, the one more semester I lived there, and then I got my degree early. So I took a job. Uh, I, I was hired over the phone to teach school in, in Michigan, and uh, went away as a, a single. School teacher, they called me an old maid back then. It, it, all the girls were engaged by their freshman, or you know, sophomore year. Pinned first, they were pinned then when they were engaged, and I just wasn't into any of that back then. And, and uh, so I got to teach school one semester, and it was a good experience. In the house, tell me about your house mother. Well, we had a nice. She was nice. I liked what I liked about the house is we learned some. Uh, we got to have a formal meal and and a little have little cups of tea, things that I hadn't uh, experienced as a farm girl, mm -hmm. and uh, so it was more proper, that, a lot different than the dorm. Uh, the food was a little better, and it was more uh, served more, you know, more more uh, I guess more interesting for girls. You know, I liked it better. Uh, that part. Were there rules you had to follow? Yes, well there were meetings too mm -hmm. and I got fined a lot because I did not like to <laughs> attend meetings. Uh, so, but, but I, I, I did, they did have me be a representative, a panhellenic representative mm -hmm. and I enjoyed that and got to know Dean, Dean Patchen, I believe was the Dean of Women and, and, and it made me kind of want to be a Dean of Women but that didn't last long. And, but I, I, I loved, uh, I'm glad I got my uh, degree in elementary education because I I liked, uh, I got to teach the fourth grade in Michigan that semester, and then I, I'm a retired school teacher now. I got in about 26 years. Wow. And the second grade was my favorite grade of all, but I taught them all. I liked them. What year did you graduate from OSU? 69, in okay. the middle of the year. Okay. Yeah, January. Well, Clint, I'm sure AGR had a house mother you may remember. Oh, yeah. Mom B. Uh, she was very formal. I mean, we, uh, we learned a lot of manners and which side of the plate to put the fork and the knife and the, uh, uh, and 
you know, in the how you should act at a dinner and and who gets served first and these types of things. But Mom B had it. And every Sunday, the, the pledge class would take her to church every Sunday. Uh, and every meal, that, uh, except for breakfast, lunch, and uh, dinner, I mean, she would be escorted into the dining room and be seated there, and we'd uh, practice our manners. And she taught us a lot about uh, what ladies would expect from us if we were going on a date or something. And But uh, Mom B had a big influence. She was there the entire four years that I lived in the AGR house. In fact, uh, uh, my, uh, one of my attorney brothers and I attended her funeral there and uh, later on that, after we were alumni. Mm. And she was a very nice lady. Mm. Well, let's talk about some of your coursework. Now, now, Clint, you have several degrees from OSU. Let's focus on your undergraduate years. Um, what are some uh, classes or professors that really stick out in your mind? Okay. Uh, I started off in animal science. Uh, the main reason I started in animal science is my FFA advisor uh, taught us meat judging, meat evaluation, carcass evaluation. Uh, so I wanted to go, uh, go in animal science so I could try out for the meat judging team. And Dr. Lowell Walters was the head of animal evaluation or meats evaluation, and he was the one that uh, was in charge of the meats judging. We actually had a coach named Ronnie Edwards, but I went out for the team and made the team and uh, uh, did all the animal science stuff, the block and bridle cut club. In fact, our, our junior year, our, uh, I believe it's 1968, our Meats judging team won the international livestock acquisition in Chicago, and uh, and you know that was a I really enjoyed that. But my first year, my advisor uh, was Dr. John Goodwin, and he was in agricultural economics. And after the first year, I did change my major to agricultural economics, and he taught the introductory course. He was also the advisor to our fraternity, Alpha Gamma Rho. Uh, so I, was, I, was, I took a lot of animal science and, I, I, and agricultural economics courses as far as all, and, and I do remember some of those other courses like chemistry. Uh, <laughs> your freshman chemistry, you had to take two semesters and they were taught there in the, I believe the physical science building, which is uh, right when you got, when you finished the class in in chemistry, you walked right out the west door and you were right there by the dairy building. I'm sure you've heard of the dairy barn, mm -hmm. which is no longer there. That's I think right. it's now the Bellman building. Yes. Uh, but you could go get in there and get your glass of milk and donuts and, and then be prepared for the rest of the day. Uh, but I, you know, I, I enjoyed my undergraduate years. Uh, and like I said, Alfred Gemma Road got me involved in a lot of, a lot of uh, organizations and uh, got to serve on the Ag Coach Student Council, and that's when Pam talked about when we met. I was, the night that our first date was when uh, I'd been elected to the Ag Student Council, and, and for the at the end of the year you have a banquet where they've announced the new the president. I was elected president and they want to announce the new officers, and I didn't have a date to go to the banquet, and that's when I looked Pam up and in my sister's fratern a sorority house and I looked at the herd book there and saw Pam and I didn't realize that at that time she was from Weatherford, Oklahoma, where we grew up 20 miles apart. And uh, so that's, that was our first date at the banquet of the Ag Coast Student Council Banquet. Hmm. Uh, anything else on undergraduates? No, I think you covered okay. it. Wait, what year did you graduate with your undergrad? I, got, I graduated in 1969. Okay. The first time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pam, looking, looking back on your career in the College of Education, classes and professors that really stand out to you? You know, I was at Southwestern quite a bit, and I, I, um, I had a, I, the, my, one of my favorite professors, I didn't know what philosophy was, and Dr. James Sill was my philosophy teacher, and I just was so amazed at 
learning something so new, and, and then he was also the speech teacher at Southwestern. And, and you know, being a smaller college, I, I think I got to know the professors a, a, a lot differently. That at OSU, I would be in classes with, you know, seemed like hundreds. <laughs> Sometimes we run an auditorium, and, and I enjoyed it. I'm not saying I didn't enjoy Oklahoma State University and the professors, but as far as remembering any names like my husband, he's got a good memory. <laughs> but I, as far as the education teachers or anything, I, I, I don't have any, you know, memories about uh, certain ones, but I remember Southwestern, um, and I remember my freshman English teacher, Miss Owen, and, and everybody, luckily, I had a really good high school English teacher that taught me what a thesis sentence was, <laughs> and thank goodness I could still remember to write the thesis sentence, and everybody got, like, Fs and Ds, and I looked out and got a B because she taught me right in high school, you know, and so I guess my memories are from the little college more than the big mm -hmm. OSU was fun, but when I think about how many hours I did at Southwestern, one full semester and then three summers, so I, I, I was there a lot too, wow. but, but really uh, Oklahoma State was, was really a, a wonderful experience also in every way. Academically and, and socially, I, I thought it was so fun to be in. A, it was like being in a big city again in Stillwater back then. You know, what what, what was that road called where all the fun was? Worcester Street. The strip. Well, the strip. They called it the strip, and and the the coachman. And I. It was just a something you know a new experience for me being from Weatherford, and I was I just thought Southwest OSU Southwestern was good, mm -hmm. but OSU was fun. Well, did you did you do any student teaching? Yes, I did my student teaching from Oklahoma State. I did it in Oklahoma City. Really? A, a really good uh, student teaching experience. I had a real good... Uh, Belle Isle? Yeah, I did it at Belle Isle. In fact, the students back then came in a limousine. It was a very ritzy part of town. This was mm -hmm. a new experience for me. The children were, were a bit spoiled, uh, but very, you know, uh, the parents were very caring. They were... Uh, probably socioeconomic higher than what I was used to, but it, it turned out to be a good experience. I, I, my theme was farming. My dad helped me bring a, a bale of hay, and, and all my when I taught the math and everything, I, I it made it all work with the farm. Uh, that was the theme. So, you know, it was. I, I really loved teaching. I think I, it was something in my blood with my great grandmother and my mother and me. I don't think I had any choice but to be a teacher. But mm -hmm. I, I wanted to be, and it, it being, and I liked elementary. I, mm -hmm. I didn't go any higher than fifth or sixth grade. Okay. Well, you mentioned the strip and the coachman. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering what you guys would do for fun. So when you weren't studying, mm -hmm. where were you? Well, you talk, uh, back you then. Go first. Back then, we didn't go home every weekend. No. We were there. Too far. Uh, of course, there was lots of activities in the house, you know, retreats or different things that you might go somewhere on the weekend, but uh, I always, I remember, you know, after we did house cleaning on Thursday nights, we would go down to Dewey's Pizza, and that later became Bill's Pizza, but it, I think it's now the sporting goods store on Washington Street about a black block south of the AGR house, uh, is it Dupree's Sporting mm -hmm. Goods, I think now, but that was uh, Dewey's Pizza when I was a freshman. Uh, and so we'd, we'd eat there, and then there was, the, like P Pam said, the coachman, the patio, and then there was another new one came in uh, just sa south of the AGR house, a little bit to the west of the patio. Uh, but uh, we'd sit out in the lawn and watch for streakers. There was, <laughs> that was back in the day of the streakers. But like Pam, Pam said, we met our junior year. And she was ahead of me because she did go to summer school. I'd come home in the summer times, but uh, but she graduated. I mean, she went to do her student teaching, so she wasn't there the uh, the semester. And then the next, she graduated in January and took the job in Michigan. So I had to go all the way to Michigan to see if we could something might happen later on. But uh, you know, we we didn't date very much. In, in college mm -hmm. because she did, she wasn't there. I think he did go to Pink Rose Formal and yeah, the Christmas sure. programs at her senior, uh, yeah, the that. time we were together her senior year. Mm -hmm. but, uh, you came to the KD? Yeah. Blue Owl. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. Hmm. But, uh, you were talking about, um, you know, under undergraduate years there. Uh, one, one opportunity I did have that was while I was an undergraduate, 
was because I had the background in meat judging in animal science, Dr. Walters called me the, the summer, the start of the summer of our junior year, right after Pam and I met, he called me and asked me if I wanted to do an internship. I was already out working on the farm with my dad. He called me if I wanted to go to, on an internship in Chicago, Illinois with Wilson and Company, which was a meat packing company. And I accepted that, so I got to spend that summer part of the time in Chicago and part of the time in the Oklahoma City plant at Wilson and Company. So that wasn't a great, a great experience I had because of the opportunity to do the meats judging. Hmm. Interesting. Did either of you work while you were in school? I worked in the kitchen of the Alpha Gamma Row House. You got your house bill cut in half. Really? The house bill was $90 a month. Can you believe that? That was for everything, food, living, everything. But if you worked in the kitchen, which meant you had to cook, get up early and cook breakfast and then help serve. Uh, so uh, I got my house built for to $45 a month. Mm -hmm. Well, when, when I did my student teaching, I had got a job over Christmas uh, wrapping presents to make me some Christmas money. But, but uh, that was the only job I had. I, I was thankful my, my parents uh, were able to, to pay for college and... And I spent my time studying. You know, he's giving the AGR's credit for teaching him to study. I studied because my parents would have been very unhappy with me <laughs> had I not made my good grades or, you know, at least B's. So, I, you know, I, I did uh, get to spend my time studying, but I did have a lot of friends that worked. And that I, I wondered how that, that's a challenge. And, and now I'm sure young people work, too, to, to work through college. So. Mm -hmm. That was a blessing to just spend my time studying. And then before I met Clint, I, I got to go, the land, the, my cousins that were Lambda Chi's, I got to go to Lambda Chi parties, and that was always fun. You get to go dance and have fun. Did you do anything else for fun around town? Um, well, I'm trying to think, what did we do? Oh, well, I played sports. I mean, my, my, I love to play tennis with my roommates and... Uh, but I, I didn't play any... You played the, the college sport thing. Intramurals. Intramurals. Mm -hmm. I didn't do that, but... Okay. Would you attend sporting events? Oh yeah, we didn't miss. We didn't miss any. I didn't miss any event uh, that came. You know, OSU had stars come to campus. Uh, trying to do you remember some of the singers and oh, the pianists? Okay, yeah. You know, we, we all got to the go concerts, to concerts. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we. Yeah. yeah they, and, uh, right, we had Ever, no, uh, the Everly Brothers. The Everly maybe. Brothers. Uh, and that great pianist. Willie Nelson. Like, we were married when we okay, were well, Nelson, okay, I think, yeah. But mm -hmm. it, as, uh, sporting events, I'm sure we both, yeah. not together, we went to all the yeah. OSU football games, and, and, I, and I think then we wore a suit and tie to the, to the football games. Yeah. Well, I remember uh, homecoming, we dressed up, yeah. too. I remember when you go to the parade. Mm -hmm. it's, it, this is such a different world. <laughs> <laughs> well, even back then, homecoming was a really big deal. Oh, what, yeah. what would y'all do to celebrate homecoming? With the AGRs? Do you have stacks? In fact, uh, my sophomore year was the first house decoration of Alpha Gamma Rho. Uh, and ever since then, you know, they've had great house decorations. Uh, uh, but this was the very first one, our sophomore year. We had a, uh, a guy in a fraternity from Louisiana that his, uh, that his mother designed a Holstein cow and we had Pistol Pete milking the cow, and we didn't have a lot of movement like the house decorations do now, but the only thing is his arms were milking the cow, and that moved the whole cow. And the, th the, the theme was, we're pulling for you, Pokes. <laughs> so that was the first house decoration. And then the next year at the house decoration, the Kappa Deltas and Pam, oh, yeah. And, and Alpha Gamma Rho built the house decoration together. So Pam and I got to work on the house decoration uh, there. Homecoming has always been a great event. At that time, the homecoming parade came down Washington Street and right in front of the house decoration. So our parents would come up there and we'd stand on the lawn of the Alpha Gamma Rho fraternity and watch the parade at, during homecoming. Uh, and it's homecoming has always been a big deal for our family. Our our children attend with us nearly every homecoming at Oklahoma State. 
Yeah, they love the parade. They love the candy being thrown at them. We we have fourteen grandchildren now, and the fifteenth on the way, and and it's every one of them come. It's it's been a family tradition uh, to the homecoming, and we uh, we spend the night. We used to spend the night in Stillwater, trying to get hotels for all of us, and and it's just I think we're trying to get their blood turned orange, aren't we? No, Working so. on that. <laughs> they all seem pretty crazy about OSU right now. Um, did both of you go through a formal graduation exercise in 1969? I know you graduated early. I didn't. You know, because Pam graduated in January, and at that time they only had the one graduation ceremony. Mm -hmm. And yes, I, I wore the cap and gown uh, in the end of the 1969 year there, and graduation was at Lewis Field. That's what they call the football stadium then. Uh, Parents come up? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were there. They came up quite a bit, different homecoming and graduations and things like that. There was Dad's weekend, I remember, in the yeah, sorority and did that. Mom's Day, and they all came. And I remember taking my dad to the basketball game, and, and I fell asleep. I mean, that's, <laughs> he was a little surprised. <laughs> you know, I... But anyway, we, it was, those were the good old days. It was a lot of fun to have our parents. I remember seeing pictures of his parents would dress up, you know, at no, the parade. Sometimes. You know, yeah, and it was really neat. And you would buy your mother, a, you know, an mm -hmm. orange piece of clothing, you know, a, it was mm -hmm. a cape or something, just special event. Yeah, I was in charge of getting the Christmas yeah. present for uh, our house mother, Mom B, when I was uh, what they call noble ruler of the house or president of the house. I, uh, so they had these orange, what do they call them? Well, They're kind of like a coat. Uh, yeah. But when me and Pam mentioned that, I bought one for my mother and Mom B at the same time. Got, got two Christmas presents taken care of. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't but, know Mom B got one just like but that. But then, yeah, at homecoming, we, had, we bought the corsages for our parents and everything, or for, mother, for our mother. Hmm. Well, you're, you're attending OSU in the late 1960s. What's the climate on campus like? Vietnam uh, protesters and things were going on. Uh, people were, a lot of people were having the long hair, and we call them hippies. And uh, I, I don't remember, I think it was before I ran into Clint, but I can remember uh, on a date that uh, we went to somebody's house and uh, We'd heard, and something was mentioned about marijuana being in the house, and I said, no, I, I said, I'm, I've got to go home, take me home. And I loved the days back then where you had to be back at the dorm at 10 o'clock or 10.30, depending on what time. Maybe on the weekends it was 11.30. I, I don't remember exactly, but I loved it. You know, it was different than now. Now it's, now it's not good, the way everything's run, in my opinion. But uh, we... You know, it, it was just, I didn't like the protests and I, I didn't like the hippie things. I didn't really much what like the music of the 60s I mean, there were, either. There were more liberal classes. Uh, uh, Student Democratic Society, SDS, Students for Democratic Society, seemed to me a very, you know, protesting type, liberal type organization. And um, one of the classes we needed to take in our curriculum was ag journalism. Mm -hmm. But the ag journalism was taught by, not in the ag school, but over in the journalism department. And our, one of the things that our instructor asked us to do was go out and to attend a student democratic society meeting and write up a report or an article for that. And there was a bunch of us ag students decided we're just not gonna do that. And the ones that went got an A, and the rest of us got C's. <laughs> One of the few C's I made was an ag journalist. <laughs> That's a good story. Uh, but it, I think, you know, it was, it was a time when uh, more protest and more students, you know, thinking their own way and we're going to do it this way. Mm -hmm. uh, streakers, we had streakers, and they on the Worcester Street. I and just that. just to clarify, you both did not participate. No, in the I even see one. <laughs> but I heard well, we were right about there. It. 
My the uh, KD house wasn't located where yours was. You yeah. could have looked out the window, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I know it was awfully exciting to be there if we beat OU. Oh yeah. I remember that. But, uh, the street wasn't the street just covered with beer cans. I heard you couldn't. I, I you couldn't even drive a car down it. <laughs> Or do you the tires? Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. in our freshman year in 1965, the OSU OU game was at, at Norman, and there was three or four of us freshman boys drove to the game that uh, went to the OSU OU football game at Norman, and we beat them uh, in 1965, the fall of 60. That'd be the fall of 65, yeah. Hmm. And we also played them, beat o OU at Stillwater the next year. Yeah. Well, you didn't notice anything odd being thrown in Theta Pond, did you? Uh, yeah. Did you? Uh, can't remember the story, but it was something between Alpha Gamma Rho and Farmhouse that something got put in Theta Pond. Yeah. But I've heard of those stories, but I, I don't can't remember witnessing any of them. <laughs> okay. Since you're an AGR, you don't know about it, huh? <laughs> I, I don't know about it either. <laughs> I never heard the story, but I do love Theta Pond. I love yeah. to sit around it, and walk around it. Well, there are any any places on campus that hold special meaning for you? Well, I know you're a librarian, but I did love the library back then. That it really was a quiet place to study, and I. I loved going by the fountain in front of it, it the beauty of it, and the, the size. I found it real special, you know, and I needed to, I studied, and I, I had to study, and I liked having that spot. It was comfortable and quiet. But, you know, as far as like where to go, uh, there was uh, some neat clothing stores downtown in, in, in uh, Stillwater. Bonnie's, I remember, that I liked to go down and shop downtown. You know, as far as what, what about what do you remember? Stores oh, I, I, I like the I enjoyed the walk from the AGR house to class where you walk uh, headed towards the library, mm -hmm. and then uh, then it, when you get to the library, you either got to go if you're going left to the agriculture uh, ag hall where you had a lot of classes, or go right to the classroom building or over to the business building. But I always enjoyed that walk, and it's so beautiful there. Besides the Theta Pond on one side, the Student Union on the other side. It, I enjoyed that. Well, Pam, you, you went and graduated early and started teaching in Michigan. How did that come about? Well, I graduated early and I wanted to get a job. and. OSU, I mean, Oklahoma paid $4,000 less than, than Michigan, and how I got that, uh, OSU, th they put my name in that I was ready to have a t uh, teaching job, and, and I was called, and I was hired over the telephone by, I believe it was the uh, superintendent uh, that I talked with, and uh, when I accepted the job over the phone because you got so much more money than you did in in Oklahoma and I thought I would get rich. It was $4,000 more and I can't remember what the whole salary was but when I went home and told my parents that I've got a job in Michigan, my mother said, oh no, you can't go by yourself. Your dad's <laughs> gonna drive you. But it, he did drive me in my car and he met my principal and helped me find an apartment and really, I just, I really loved uh, getting to, to, to do all that by myself but I was kind of embarrassed that I thought, well, I might as well get married if, my, if I'm, they're going to go with me every time I get a job. <laughs> but it, it was special because Dad even found where I was supposed to take care of the car. Mm -hmm. You know, it, what he said, now be sure and go in every month or so and they'll check the oil. And, <laughs> and, and the principal, it was a female principal and she was, she was really special. She, I rode the school bus with her so that she wanted me to see where every child came from because it was a, probably a lower socioeconomic farming group. And, and they were just really nice people. And uh, mainly it was just uh, a, a neat experience to get to know another part of the state, I mean the United States, and they were very friendly and mm -hmm. helpful. Sure. Yeah. Well, Pam's off teaching in Michigan. You're finishing up your degree, and you graduated in 1969. Tell me about what happens next. What do you do? Well. I might relate a little bit of the story that she was talking sure. about. She was in Port here in Michigan, so uh, the spring break of the, of, the, 
of my senior year, the spring break, uh, she asked me, wanted to know if I could come up to Michigan to see her. So I, I flew to Detroit and she picked me up at the Detroit airport and then we drove north about a little over an hour to Port Huron, Michigan, where she taught. And it, it was, I remember it was snowing on the way there. Yeah. And uh, then over the weekend, we drove from uh, Michigan across to the uh, Niagara Falls on the Canadian side and drove back. Well, we did it all in one day, but, uh, but that, you know, that kind of, it didn't seal the deal, but it got us a little bit better acquainted since we didn't spend a whole lot of time together our senior year. Well, my roommate at the, in our little apartment that my dad helped me find, she was a, a single girl from uh, Colorado. And we each had our own bedroom, so Clint got her a van. And he was very thankful you didn't have to have a motel room. And I took a sick leave one day but that I only, you get three sick leaves, and I didn't take any more, but that I did take one the whole semester, and, and that's when we got to see Niagara Falls, and, okay. and it was a sight to see it partially frozen. Uh -huh. like On the that. Canadian and side. The, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, the uh -huh. Canadian side, because weren't we up high? No, we were... We, on the connect because see we saw it on the other side too didn't we later on yeah. later on a lot later on but anyway it was just it was really fun but I don't remember inviting you I remember you oh, calling you okay <laughs> wanting to invite my mother did not allow me to talk to boys on the phone or to initiate anything like, so I like called to see if I could come to me well I don't I, I don't remember details but I don't remember it was my idea but okay. anyway it was good because it was good to see a, an Oki again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We had a good a good time and, and it made me think about seriously, you know, about my future. About but we didn't I don't remember that you proposed that no, week. We just talked. Yeah. <laughs> we just but I did start thinking seriously that Michigan was really cold. <laughs> and I couldn't even I didn't even have a garage to put my car in it and my I would get with my door would get frozen and I'd have to get up next to the car and somehow get in. So it made me start thinking more about Oklahoma. How long did you stay in Michigan? Just one semester. And then I came back to graduate school. I didn't forgot to tell that, but I did get a an opportunity to uh, be a graduate assistant at OU and, and I really don't like to tell people I have a piece of paper from there, but it was free. And mm -hmm. all I had to do was stay in a, I can't remember the name of the dorm. Do you remember? Because we were mm -hmm. dating. So all, I stayed with 200 freshman girls, and I had four graduate assistants under me. I don't know how I got the top job. But they that was back in the day where the kids, the young freshman girls, you did them. They did a bed check, uh -huh. and I didn't have to do a bed check, but four girls did with the 200 girls in the dorm. And, it, and the doors were locked at a certain evening, certain time of the evening. And one time, my main job was just to check in to see that everybody was there. And then I did have to plan the social events, which was fun. I planned the parties for, for the dorm. And then uh, one time, a girl overdosed, and I had to ride the ambulance with her. But everything worked out really good. She made it fine. But uh, anyway, I got my uh, master's in uh, guidance and counseling from, from OU in just one year. And that was the year you were in the... Army. Okay. You were in the reserves. Yeah. yeah what after uh, after I gra uh, actually before I graduated in 1969, I can remember me and two or three other guys. For seems like the whole every weekend of the last semester, we would drive around and try to find a reserve unit, because uh, Army Reserve unit or a National Guard, because when we graduated, our college deferment expired, and we would be drafted so we were trying to figure out how we would serve the military so we would drive around to different places and so actually I think sometime in April I found out at Clinton right here locally they were needing some recruits for to be in the Army Reserve so I actually signed up for the Army Reserve before I graduated Okay. and so uh, after I did graduate uh, I was called up to active duty at, at uh, Fort Lewis, Washington, uh, which is near Seattle, Washington. So I served uh, six months active duty uh, uh, in infantry there in Fort Lewis, Washington. So when I came back in November, uh, let's see, Pam was, uh, you were already in graduate school when I came back and she picked me up at at uh, the airport in Oklahoma City, and we drove right to Stillwater to homecoming. Mm -hmm. It was in October, and uh, this is November, and homecoming. So 
uh, after I was after the Army Reserve, then I took a job with Wilson and Company, the same company that I did an intern with between my junior and senior year. And she was in Norman, and I was working there in Oklahoma City. And uh, when I got back from the Army, she had already arranged for our wedding, and so it was up to me to ask her to marry her. <laughs> <laughs> Because yeah, she had the pre preacher and everything lined up, and I think so. I, it was Dr. James Sill. You know, I told you about the professor of philosophy guy. I really liked him, and I told him, I said, you know, I said I, I was raised in the First Baptist Church, Club, Weatherford, and uh, and I but I told him I would like for him to marry us, but that you didn't know you were going to marry me yet. <laughs> he said, well, let me know when he knows, and and he he uh, did the uh, the service with the Baptist with our pastor at the time and so it really was it was really special that uh, I don't know how I connected with him but the interesting thing is his son is an attorney and Clint's the the valedictorian of his class That's married true. James Sill's son and we're connected with them and, and we have dinner with them and Edmund some <laughs> and and of all things and for me to say yeah your dad married us mm -hmm. you know but it it was a it was really great that it worked out where uh, you know, that he did go ahead and ask me, and he finally figured it out. So we, we were married in June yeah. of that fall, uh, it was 1970. May, you mean May 23rd? I mean May, yeah. yeah May, May the 23rd, 1970. Uh, while I was working for Wilson and Company, and she was finishing up uh, graduate school yeah. when we got married. Okay. So. so how do you get back to Stillwater for your master's degree? Well, uh, I was working for Wilson and Company. Wilson and Company headquarters was in Chicago. But they, during the, uh, right before I started working there full time, they moved their headquarters to Oklahoma City. And the Oklahoma, I was working at the beef department in the Oklahoma City plant, and there were 12 of us in the beef department. Well, they decided that Oklahoma City was not a very good place for beef because most of the feedlots and the access to an, the beef animals were in Kansas, southwest Kansas, Oklahoma Panhandle. So they cut back on the beef department. Well, uh, there were two young guys in that department, Charlie Bates and myself, who were both on meat judging team together at, at OSU. They decided to keep us and let go of some 55 and 60 year old people. So I decided that I didn't think I would want to stay and work for that organization. So Pam and I decided that uh, maybe I should go back to graduate school in agricultural economics. So uh, we, we were working, we were, on the job there for about a year and then went back that next August uh, to Oklahoma State University and she got a job teaching in Pawnee, Oklahoma and I commuted back and forth with some other people that lived in Pawnee to, to graduate school. So that that brought us back. Yeah. Pam, what grade did you teach in Pawnee? Pawnee, it was sixth grade and uh, it was again a uh, it was a large classroom. There were 35 students and uh, a, a lot of a large minority groups. There were um, la a large number of black and Indian students and uh, not, not Spanish, but I, I really had a, another a, a good experience with them. I had the, 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 the Spanish, I mean, the, the Indian boy was the president of the class and he was a wonderful straight-A student and his mother was head of the PTA at, at Pawnee, Oklahoma. And so this was just really a really a good experience, but it was a lot of kids in one room to have 35 sixth graders. We were really in there tight close, but uh, I thought Pawnee was a good school system. And uh, we, I taught there three years while Clint was driving back and forth. And uh, then uh, we started our family after three years. Then I, I, that was back in the day, if you were expecting a baby, if you were pregnant, you had to go to your principal, and then and then he would send you to the superintendent, and you weren't supposed to be pregnant and teaching school back then. That was against the rules. So when I realized I was pregnant and the baby was due June, uh, you know, I timed it so it would be a summer baby, so I could finish the year at mid, I didn't look too pregnant in January, so I went and told the, the superintendent that I was expecting. And he said, well, I'll pretend that you didn't tell me and you can finish the year. <laughs> and so I remember when we took the sixth graders to Oklahoma City, to the, I was pretty, pretty big with child and I didn't get to ride the school bus. They told me to bring my own car. <laughs> but anyway, it worked out real good. I got us a sweet baby girl and I got to finish the year, keep my check. Well, Clint, you, 
you're working on your your master's degree, and what are what are you thinking your next steps are? Well, um, we always I mean, we had always wanted to raise our children on the farm. Mm -hmm. So when I finished my master's degree and, and did my thesis and everything, we came and interviewed at Southwestern. But at that time, it didn't seem like it was a good move. Uh, and I'd already been asked to go on and get my PhD. Uh, one of the people there that was very influential, uh, besides my major advisors, was the head of the department, which was Dr. James Plaxico. And uh, he encouraged me to go on and, and get my PhD. And my, my advisor was Dr. Mike Boljay, and he had been doing research or he had, he had done research at Iowa State on uh, transferring farms from one generation to the next or estate planning. And he got me started doing research in that area. I finished up all the coursework for a PhD in three years and had my master's and finished all the co coursework in three years and uh, was working on the research. And this was back when we had a computer model and it would be a big deck of cards and we had to take them over to the math science building and down the basement they had a great big computer system and you'd run it and something wrong you'd go back and punch the cards and then go back and run it again and run it again but but i had all the research done and i was start, starting to write my uh, dissertation uh, and then they came out with a tax reform act of 1976 and that changed all the tax laws so i had to go go back and uh, decide how I was going to, I mean, my research would be irrelevant. So we, we ended up looking at the impact of the change in the law. So we had to reprogram everything, put the new law in there, new tax rules and everything in there. Uh, and also during that time, Dr. Plaxico uh, asked me if I wanted to teach and do extension work in the Ag Econ Department, teaching Ag Finance and financial ma Farm Financial Management. And he said, I'll give you 90% of a full professor pay, and then you, uh, you uh, start teaching the class and doing extension work with, out with farmers and uh, ag lenders. And I really did enjoy that. And I kind of put off writing that dissertation. Uh, and one day he called me in after I'd been on the job about a year, and he said, do you want to be a dead skunk in the middle of the road? And I said, so he kind of, prompted me to go ahead and finish the dissertation, which we, we did. And uh, so, but I really did enjoy teaching farm finance and ag, uh, agriculture finance because we got to meet a lot of uh, agriculture lenders and, and during doing programs out in the country. And also, you know, I, I knew a lot of students. They weren't, the students weren't too, too much younger than me, but you know, a lot of those students I can still visit with today. Uh, a lot of the students in the 70s uh, took jobs in farm credit uh, and became loan officers of farm credit and, ag and agriculture banks and uh, that's been a lot of good contacts over the years there. Mm -hmm. Pam, you started teaching in Stillwater at some point too? Well, yeah, when we moved uh, after the baby was born uh, in Clinton's in graduate school, our first little girl, Courtney, I uh, found a a babysitter that just kept Courtney and one other little neighbor girl. So she just two little girls, and she was a precious lady. And I, our friends across the street, she told me, uh, the little girl was just a year. Her friend was just a year older. This is Christy, and so they we just I dropped her off, and I got a job teaching fifth grade this time in Stillwater. And the neat thing is the principal was a friend of my dad. That's probably how I got the job, as I remember. He, he, uh, he had a farm out there by our farm in Weatherford, and he was the principal at uh, uh, Argyle McLaughlin was his name. And Argyle, I'd known him forever. And, he would, and so it was great to get to teach for Mr. McLaughlin, Argyle. And, and he had a, it was a real good school, Westwood. I guess it's, it's still there. We, I enjoy going by and seeing it again. But... Uh, Anyway, so Courtney was, uh, I picked her up, dropped her off on the way to school and picked her up right after school and everything just uh, worked out great. And, but we, it, we did seem like the way all that changed on Clint, it took a long time for him to get his doctorate. So then another baby came along, <laughs> another little girl. And, 
And that was just perfect too, because then with that one, I stayed home. Mm -hmm. I had a job then. A real, a real she supported job. me for so many years <laughs> oh. when I was in graduate school. I, I loved teaching and it worked out just great. But so we, then, lived, yeah. we lived on 1024 Brown Drive, which is the corner of Brown and Monroe, yeah. uh, northern part of Stillwater, south of the airport. We actually rented the first house in Stillwater from a professor that went to Iran for two years. So he was looking for someone to live in his house. So we rented that house and then we bought the house across the street. Hmm. Uh, good neighbors, I mean, Pete and Zonabelle Williams and the good ones, John Goodwin, Phoebe, and their children babysit for ours. And he was one of your favorite professors. Yeah. That worked out yeah. really neat that their daughter kept our daughter. Yeah, we had some really good neighbors there in Stillwater. We enjoyed it. I mean, we enjoyed it. I mean, I was, my, uh, my, I remember my daughter Courtney, when she first learned to talk, she, said, she asked where dad was. He's working on the pooter, the computer, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then, well, after we did, uh, when we left Oklahoma State University, then I took a job at Southwestern, again, trying, wanting to get back to raising our children on the farm. And Pam got a job here at Arapaho School, and that's, that was in 1980 when we built this house. We moved back here in 79, and I taught at Southwestern Oklahoma State University. Uh, but uh, the interesting thing about computers is it went we we bought our first desktop computer when we got out of here a trs 80 radio radio shack model 3 which was one of the first uh desktop computers because i'd always been working with computers and uh, i kept the farm records on this desktop computer for her parents and my parents and uh, did a lot of work with the computer and, and that technology has just advanced so much since then. And, but, uh, yeah, we finally got moved back to western Oklahoma. Uh, and that's when we built the home we're in now, in 1980. What year did you earn your Ph.D.? 1978. Okay. So I, I worked for six years while working on the... Uh, 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 well, fit, trying to finish my dissertation, I worked for six years there in the Ag Econ Department teaching extension work. Okay. So you moved back to Arapaho and you're teaching at Southwestern. What are you, what are you teaching? Uh, I taught in the School of Business uh, Management and I taught most of the quantitative management courses, the ones that had to deal with a lot of math. And, and I taught business stat and, you know, in, at Oklahoma State University, I taught the one class and did extension and, and research. Out here, it's just all teaching, so we had to teach maybe four, five, cla four classes a day, every day. Uh, so it was different, uh, but it did allow me to, to get back home at, at the farm, you know, when we weren't teaching. And it was just 20 miles from Weatherford to here. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, one, some of the things we did at Southwestern, which uh, one thing we did, we, at the, you know, back then it was in the oil boom here in the, in the uh, late 70s, early 80s. So one of the things that, with my background in extension, they, I kind of organized a lot of different short courses and we had them at Southwest. One of the things we did was had a mineral owner short course and we had a hundred people coming from all over the, the county coming to because we had some outstanding speakers in this in this area here and that, that's one thing i enjoyed doing at southwestern and then also i did the i was a uh, the managing director of the small business development center which we got to work with a lot of small businesses startup businesses here in in western oklahoma doing that so that was kind of what i did at southwestern and pam back here in Arapaho, what were you teaching? What grade? Went all the way down to second grade. Well, I did fifth one time, one year, sixth. and then at sixth, and then back down to second. And I stayed in second because they laughed at my jokes and they liked me. You know, as they got older, they just get a little, not as much fun. The second graders were just a lot of fun. I loved reading to them, and, and I loved for them to write. Uh, they would write their books, and I had parents come up and volunteer and would uh, go over and uh, make sure the children had their uh, the period and their capital letters where they needed to and that their sentence made sense. And then when the pa volunteer parents had gone over the work, then the children would come up in the author's chair, and they would sit up in front of the 
the, the whole uh, class and read their, their story as an author. And that was, that was a lot of fun to hear what they wrote. And I liked teaching them to write and then reading aloud to them. But, but really, teaching has just always been a fun, special thing. And then having our kids go to Arapaho, that was really fun. I could make sure I knew who my kids played with on the playground and whether they ate their green beans or not, you know, at lunch. Boy, if they, they went, get in trouble. Yeah, I knew. I knew the <laughs> trouble they were in. And if they left their homework at school, I had a key to the building, no excuse. We'd go back and get it. So it worked. Was it challenging? Both of you had day jobs and then coming back and working on the farm? Yeah, she took care. She pretty well raised her children. Oh, uh, just, <laughs> they were... They were they were easy. <laughs> so when you came home from from teaching, then what would you do? Well, change clothes, and oh. then go out and work on the farm. My my dad was still fairly active in farming then, and and we started Pam and I started farming. Actually, we we bought some land and before we actually left Oklahoma State University. Uh, so we were farming in the summertime, back and commuting back and forth quite a bit then, and then. But this gave me more opportunity to start livestock because I'd be here every evening and early in the morning sometimes but uh, to, t to help take care of that. But yes, we did. Uh, our family time wasn't that great. Uh, we, Pam did pretty well take care of that. But we did have a lot of family time because our, our children, after they got a little older, were in 4-H and they had sheep and I got to spend a lot of time going with them to sh sheep shows. And then our son was born a year after we built it, after we moved out here too. Uh, so we had the two, Courtney and Sarah and Rusty then, uh, growing up here in this home. But we, our, both our girls and our son were both involved in 4-H and our son involved in FFA. So we, we did spend quite a bit of time there. And then basketball and baseball, mm -hmm. we spent a lot of time with them. Pam got them ready to, for sports. And uh, but our our daughter, our our Sarah, our middle daughter, got to be on the state championship basketball team from Arapaho for two two years. They were state champion, one year runner up. And her son was in uh, both of her daughters, Courtney and Sarah, played basketball and were involved in 4-H. And they did very well in 4-H. They won a lot of state awards in their sewing and baking bread and these types of things. And, because his mother knew how to teach them how to sew. Yeah. Uh, she was so talented. Uh, she, she could look at a garment in a, in a store and just make it without a, a pattern. That's how great she was. So that's how my girls won anything to do with sewing and, and cooking. And, and plus she taught me how to bake bread and things. So it, we really, uh, we were blessed to have a, a lot of help. And my parents were very helpful at Weatherford. They could fill in if if I, if I was sick or, or if I was teaching and, and a child needed to go to Oklahoma City to see a, a, a doctor, they would take him. And so, and his, same with his parents. So really, you know, that's how, talk about me raising the kids by myself. First of all, you know, if you're young, you can do more. And it was fun to, to be with him. And, and we did miss Clint a lot, but he usually came back in time to eat with us <laughs> in the evening. And so we did fine with two sets of parents right here close to help us. Oh, and then in the summer, yeah, you know, yeah. you have yeah. a whole lot of time. In Southwestern, we didn't. You, it was voluntary whether you taught in the summer school, and I, I did not teach in the summertime out here. Which, How long were you with Southwestern? Uh, see, we moved out back here in '79, and I think in 1987, I guess eight years. 19, I went to part time with the Small Business Development Center, and then in 1987, I went. We went back to full time farming. Uh, so we, you know, we grew up on a farm, but we didn't really come back into full time farming until we were in our 30s. Uh, so, and it's the same way with with our son Rusty. He he didn't come back until he was around 30 years old. Also, you got you got to want to come back to farm. You and you, your spouse really wants to enjoy that so we're uh, uh, he had other he he finished two degrees at Oklahoma State University mm -hmm. got his CPA worked for Chesapeake or he worked for Conical Phillips in Chesapeake before he came back to the farm so uh, it's, we never dreamed he would with those two pieces of paper but glad he did because it makes traveling a lot better now to know that 
got a lot of good backup. Sure. Well, when you decided to go back to full-time farming, um, what were some of the changes you, you hoped to put in place versus part-time work? Well, we, uh, the main thing, we, we, our cropping, our crops became more time, I mean, like alfalfa, we increased the amount of alfalfa acres, which requires a lot more time, which you couldn't do on a part-time basis. And we increased the number of cattle that we ran primarily. Uh, uh, you know, each generation, I mean, like we said, we're fourth generation farmers. Each generation has brings additional experience and technology back to the farm. I mean, I, I think, you know, our grandparents and were in the table, everything was done by hand and horses without tractors. Then our, our parents, the mechanization came along, they got tractors so they could increase the size of their farms. And then when we came along it was a computer age. We could use a computer for keeping records, to making decisions, using uh, spreadsheets and other things. So I, I feel like during our generation it was more the computer age. But now in our son, it's, uh, it's technology is uh, uh, so much information systems and uh, data. They got so much information. They got the internet. Uh, and then, then uh, precision farming. So there's many, so much technology is increasing so rapid. Uh, so I don't, I don't know what the next generation will have. I mean, for farming, it's, it'll be different. Uh, but yeah, I guess for my case, it was after we came back full time. Farming was just increasing the cattle part of it, and uh, and alfalfa hay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And. Uh, When you when you go ahead and harvest your crop, where do you take it to market? Okay, for our wheat, which is you know a large part of our farming, our, our cropland is wheat. It goes to the farmers co-ops, uh, primarily at Clinton. Some of our land is close to Custer City. We take it there, the co-op in Weatherford. But uh, you know we we're really big co-op people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, farmers working together to help themselves to market their crops and buy their inputs. But uh, I'm on the board of, at the Clinton Cooperative, and another co-op we work a lot with is the Farm, farm Credit Organization, and we borrow money from Farm Credit Association of Western Oklahoma. Uh, that our our cattle, we pretty well we market them, try to market them at home through an order buyer to go to feed lots and we uh, but we use co-ops a lot and everything to buy all of our fertilizer and feed and uh, and uh, sell it and market our wheat. Mm -hmm. They spray for us too? Yeah, and... put down the fertilizer. And... Okay. Well, when you when you look back on your time at OSU how did earning your education there impact your lives? You want me to go first? Yeah, go ahead. Well, I don't. I think uh, working with people is one of the biggest benefits that I've gained from at OSU. I mean, like being on the meets judging team, you're working with people through a coach. You're working with your uh, instructors and your advisor, uh, and then your uh, and any different different student organizations. You're working it with people. I think that's one of the biggest impact it's made on my life, and it it gave me. I mean, coming from a small town, small school, uh, going to Oklahoma State University just gave me a, a better chance to work in groups and work with people and and actually develop leadership skills. Uh, in this area, besides coming to OSU, the big impact was being able to meet my wife, Pam, which never would have happened. <laughs> you were blessed, and you know, as far as Oklahoma State with me, I think I just, I just had such a good time. It was such a good experience. I had so much fun. I developed such loyalty, uh, love for the campus, the beauty of it, for the football, the basketball team. I, I just liked all the activities. I'd say. 
I'd say Oklahoma State University provides not only a good education, but you know, there's just something about it that's, to me, I, I see the farm, the agriculture connection, much more than I did at Southwestern, way much more than I did at, at OU. So I, I think all that, and then not to mention that, that I was so blessed to pledge this sorority for not much time at all and run into his sister. So I agree, you, the big impact was meeting Clint and getting to marry a farmer and come back to Western Oklahoma. Mm -hmm raise my kids on a farm. Perfect. And share your love for OSU with your children as well. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Me too. Yes. Well, when you, when you look at your time at OSU and you, you of course, come back to the farm here in this part of Oklahoma, uh, do you run into fellow grads in the area? Are there many in this part of the state? No, there's there's quite a few in in this area of the state that we we see you know several probably every week but we also we see a lot of Oklahoma State people in our work with co-ops and our work with farm credits and uh, we probably run on to someone uh, at least every I mean uh, almost every week for example last. Last week we were at Stillwater for the the dinner that Gary Clark invited us to with over in the hotel and restaurant group that serves a dinner, uh, and we we were at the Ag Econ Scholarship Banquet the week before that. So and, and just this week I was at a Farm Credit Association directors meeting right there in the uh, one part of it was in the West Watkins Center and the other part was in uh, over in the Alumni uh, Center there, and there were probably uh, two thirds of the people there were Oklahoma State University graduates, and when I, you know, a lot of we just run on to every all the time, and our closest friends are Oklahoma State University graduates. Uh, my so, co-teachers were you know. so many of my mm -hmm. co-teachers were OSU graduates too. You know, but but we love o OU graduates too. I have friends from both universities, but but really, I just. I just think it, we're so connected. Clint's got football season tickets, baseball, basketball. We, it is kind of a long drive, so we found a little place in Edmond that we can manage at our age to get from our farm about an hour and a half to get there and then 45 minutes to Stillwater. So we can go to a lot more now. So it's working out better. We love to get back to campus. I love to watch Clint have to give out scholarships at the Aggie Con through his co-bank board. And mm -hmm. it's just fun to still be a part of Oklahoma State. I don't want to ever quit being a part of it. Hmm. What year did you retire from teaching? Let's see. It was the year 2011 when when the the bombing took place mm -hmm. in, okay. in in New York City. Was it, did I say that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Nine one one happened. Mm -hmm. I was teaching at uh, Mustang my last year when that happened and then I retired after. I taught one year at Mustang because all the years I forgot to tell you, I was at Arapahoe for like 25 years, but you didn't get to be in, sign up for Social Security. Oh. And it didn't make sense that I was going to retire and not have Social Security. And so I chose to go one year because I, I couldn't convince anybody to change and taught one year at uh, UConn okay. at a school, uh, uh, Trails, uh, Trails Elementary. And uh, anyway, um, that way I could pay into Social Security. Mm -hmm. but then after that, I, I haven't been back. Okay. Yeah. It's been a long time. You know, when we were young, the teachers voted not to withhold Social Security, which sounds like a good deal to us. But then when you get close to retirement, she, uh, we pay, we, I pay into Social Security on the farming income, but she could not even draw spouse's benefits, which is half of, of the, the my benefits, mm -hmm. she couldn't draw, pay into that, except there was an exception if you taught the last year while you were working in a, where you did pay in, so that's the reason we did that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. Well, Clint, you've been very involved uh, with your service in agriculture from Farm Credit of Western Oklahoma to the Clinton, Oklahoma Farmers Cooperative, Custer County Rural Water District, the Cattlemen's Association. Uh, I could probably go on and on and on. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and recently you were inducted into the Oklahoma Ag Hall of Fame. What was that honor like for you? Well, it was it was a real surprise. Uh, our car wash, well, actually, it, our rural electric, the people that provide the uh, the co-op that provides rural electric service to us here. Uh, one of the board members, Bob Travis, came to me one evening and said, "Our board would like to nominate you for this award." And uh, I said, "Okay." So, but the general manager of the Kiwash Rural Electric Co-op wrote up the application with very limited information with me and then a couple of weeks later they came and said uh, that we'd received that that honor. And it, it's a tremendous honor. We got to go to the Capitol and our whole family, all, ch all three children and spouses and 14 grandchildren were there and there were a whole bunch of farm credit and cooperative people, people from Oklahoma State University uh, Your AGR friends and uh, Alpha Gamma Rho were all there. I think that they enjoyed watching our grandkids more than they did watching the ceremony. <laughs> yeah. Because some, uh, but but we really enjoyed that day to get and our family getting to do that, and uh, we really appreciate that honor. Uh, it's something that uh, we'll always remember, uh, and we really appreciate the the electric bo uh, board for nominating me for that. But, it was a joint effort. I mean, we're, we've been in this together for 46 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, you know, I, I just, as far as board service, I, it, uh, we just happened to be uh, at the right place and got to be know the right people and work with people. And I, uh, we, we enjoy any way we can support Western Oklahoma and agriculture. Uh, and it's because of Oklahoma State University and the acquaintances we made there that we got to serve in these boards. Uh, the, the board that I serve on now is CoBank, which uh, it, their mission is to support rural communities and agriculture with reliable and consistent credit, uh, which uh, they provide credit to rural electric co-ops, to agriculture co-ops, to the farm credit associations. So I really enjoy serving on that board because you get to meet people from all over the United States uh, and they're all have agriculture at heart. Well you you return to this part of Oklahoma your family is very much involved in the farming operation uh, is that very important to you when you when you look back on everything? Yes when we when we look back we see how our parents helped us mm -hmm. to get started. I mean, uh, they, and we, and they gave us a passion for farming. Uh, they gave us a passion for living in western Oklahoma and growing up on a farm. And we want to pass whatever experiences that we have to our children. Our daughters do not live close by. I mean, one lives in Guyman and one in Edmond, but they definitely have an interest and want to continue the farm and own farmland. Mm -hmm. uh, so that it's in their blood just like it is ours. And our little grandchildren, they're all little city slickers, but they know where potatoes come from because they come to my garden and they plant the potatoes around uh, St. Patrick's Day and then they come and dig them around the 4th of July. And we have, my son and his girls and his wife have help, are helping me. We have enough potatoes out there last year for three families, three big families. We were really proud because of our our, it started raining and we got past our drought and we had water for a while. And, but, but anyway, I, I loved doing that with my dad. He, he grew, of course we had lots of vegetables and, and my mother and dad both. Corn we would plant, your, his parents did the same thing. We would freeze corn, put it in the deep freeze. Uh, a big long rows, not just a garden, you know, enough to last you all winter. That's what farmers did back then. You think about, when I think about this generation, the way our parents had nothing. I mean, they worked so hard. Uh, our, we're, it's such a gift for them to pass on the land to us. And, and then how, how what we've gotten to do, and we're so thankful that, that we can pass it on to. Great tradition for your children and your grandchildren. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, oftentimes we find when talking to alumni that they have a loyalty to Oklahoma State University. Uh, yes. What do you what do you think drives this loyalty to OSU? Well, 
um, going back to it's just I mean that's the acquaintances that you made there and the people that you know that are maybe still on the fact or that are on the faculty there or that you've got to know over the years that are on the faculty there uh, I think it's just the relationships that you have with the people that attended with you and were at Oklahoma State when you were, those relationships that last forever, and then your relationships that you have with the people that are there now, working at the university now. Uh, like the department head of agriculture and economics, Mike Woods, we, we visit quite often, and it's just a relationship that it's a buy, uh, you're bound to it. Uh, like they say, we're loyal and true. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, tell me what your children are doing today. Well, um, you know, our son's farming with us, and his precious wife gets to be a stay-at-home mom. We're so thankful we have one of the sweetest daughter-in-laws in the world. Then our two daughters, the one daughter is married to a, uh, he, he has his master's in nutrition, and he works at the uh, VA in administration over, I think there are like eight other nutritionists that he works that work under him, and so she gets to be a stay-at-home mom, and I'm thankful that, I mean, I raised my kids, and they had to go to babysitters, and, and I worked outside the home, and for my, now, and for my daughter-in-law, and then my middle daughter, and even my oldest daughter, now they both, they all have college degrees. My daughter-in-law has a degree from OSU, my middle daughter uh, has her degree from OBU, but she did go to OSU two years, and then my oldest daughter has uh, two degrees from OSU, yet they're they're, they're all stay-at-home moms, and we could never do that. We had no money, you know, and, and we're just thankful that our children are able to do that. Not very many young women get to be stay-at-home moms in this day and age. You know, they may not get to be forever. I figure they're going to have to go to work if they want to put their kids through college. <laughs> Someday they'll have to go back to work. But. Our, oldest, our oldest daughter, Courtney, has a she got a degree at Oklahoma State University and then she has a master's in speech pathology and I forgot to say who she's married to and, she, and her husband Jamie Oaks is a, a CPA in Guyman, Oklahoma it's a family business he's the third generation of the Oaks and Associates there and uh, Sarah has her master's in, she has two degrees too, yeah. in counseling or I no, know, at, testing testing and got it at Southwestern so she's they both in education and got Mm -hmm. So uh, we're very proud of our children and what, how, what they've accomplished and uh, grandchildren too. Well, we've, we've taken a very quick fast forward through your life. Uh, what am I missing? What am I not asking? Is there anything else you'd like to add that we haven't spoken about today? Well, I think we need to give God the glory for everything that's happened. I, I, I liked what Clint said in one of his, one, one, of, one time when he was talking, you know, we feel like God's providence, you know, had us meet the right people, being at the right place in the right time for us to meet each other and for us to both be farmers and, and not this far apart. We're very, very thankful to our Heavenly Father. We get to ten. Uh, we're members of church in Weatherford, Oklahoma, yeah. where our son and daughter and, and three of our grandchildren are, are members there. So we get to uh, be with them some besides in just a work environment. Uh, we enjoy, really enjoy the Trinity Baptist Church in Weatherford, Oklahoma together. One thing at Oklahoma State University, uh, we have... Uh, that I've been a little bit instrumental in helping to get started is we've got two endowed chairs in the Oklahoma State University uh, Ag Econ Department. The first one is a cooperative chair uh, filled by Phil Kinkle and he's been there well, probably almost, I'm not sure when it started, but ten, he's been there several years. This all happened because our Oklahoma Farmers Co-ops and electric co-ops and farm credit associates all went together and put up money for an endowed chair and this was right before farmland industries took bankruptcy bankruptcy and they they matched every dollar that we put up and they're no longer here but 
and then the state of Oklahoma matched it so we have a full-time endowed share in cooperatives which and then he teaches a cooperative classes and does a lot of uh, work with co-op directors and managers for training and he's, he's doing a tremendous job and then to hear more recently the farm credit associations in Oklahoma put up money to for the uh, farm credit chair which is a, a Rodney Jones uh, is the endowed chairperson there and he teaches agriculture finance and and farm management and does extension work with ag lenders and and farmers in the ag finance area <coughs> but this all the co-op uh, uh, all the farm credit associations put together money and then t boone pickens matched it it was part of his matching program but then the stock market fell and the value of that endowed money before we had the person there went down so cobank which is a uh, farm credit cooperative bank put in money to bring it back up to the level and now we have a fully endowed chair there in farm credit so I, I, I'm real thankful for that that they can uh, you know it, not only do they teach but they do work with uh, the co-ops out in the country mm -hmm. well we we definitely appreciate your support and loyalty to Oklahoma State University uh, and all that you've done for this part of Oklahoma as well, uh, from education to farming, uh, just amazing. So thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. We enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you.